Okay guys, welcome back to the game room. We've got ourselves a, a kind of traditional, a traditional unboxing video. Um, but yes, yes, um, the current rise or continual rise of retro prices has kind of forced me into this conclusion. So I picked myself up this the Super Console X and we're going to take a look at it see what it's like see what you get in the box and whether or not you should entertain the idea really uh, as you can see there I was just showing you you can see all the connectivity here what I like about this one is uh, it's got a standard definition AV output as well now that may come in useful people for my CRT so I'm undecided yet on how to go with this um, that's what's in the box obviously all right this is a console itself um, I do apologize my unboxing videos are never that professional <laughs> So there's a little sign on there telling you uh, whatever you do, do not update this kind of emulation station type thing. I imagine the whole front end, is it retro arch? I imagine that's what it is. Um, you can do that on pretty much everything, but uh, I'm not really that technical and I can't really be bothered to create my, my own uh, so I'd rather have this uh, consoleized version. That's all your vent holes underneath, uh, but I I don't think they're adequate because there is no fan in this, and that's a concern of mine. So that's your SD card, couple of USB ports there. This is the standard version, so I think it's a 64 gig card. You can get a larger one with even more games, it's just crazy. So we get a standard HDMI cable. We also get this kind of multi-USB input, that's quite useful. That's a bit of a bonus really. So I imagine if you've got other devices you want to connect, then they've got you covered. Uh, this might be the only issue, two prong uh, plug. So you'll need an adapter, you know, one of those adapters that you use for your shaver. So that's straightforward. Uh, that's your obligatory Chinese instructions there. But these instructions, um, they offer a little bit more. Which is nice to see. And shockingly, we've got some colour screenshots there. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I quite like that. I like that. And uh, what else have we got? Alright, so we've got these kind of knockoff generic Bluetooth controllers in the same vein as PS3. Now, there's a nice bit of resistance to the analog sticks, I must say that. But everything else feels a bit ropey shall we say. Uh, they're not analog at the back either. They, they appear to be just standard triggers. Uh, a couple of AAA batteries under here. So do what I do, just use rechargeables. This will be the first thing to break on these. But uh, getting another controller, I'll just use the Xbox controller, that'll be a lot easier. And there's the other one. And they're not automatic power wise, you do have to physically switch them on. You just see that button there. And that button is lethal, it's really sharp and horrible. There's your couple of USB dongles. That's all good stuff. So let's just quickly lay out exactly what's in the box. It's such a small, uh, a small form factor, this little console. 
there you go that's pretty much everything um, and it is simply plug and play and I'm just going to show some quick footage gameplay footage because I've spent a few hours with it I've put it through its paces uh, as you can see uh, Mario on the N64 here don't really have any issues with this and I've tried to play the games that I really know inside and out if that makes sense um, and I just haven't even begun to scratch the surface with all the settings and the way you can customize it and everything else so it's absolutely crazy the, how deep you can go into it and it, you know again it might be teaching people to suck eggs here but uh, the whole emulation scene has never been my thing really I do love this game I do have the original the original copy it's a bit tatty my one but it is complete I will have to decide on whether I go with the CRT or HDMI uh, maybe I can do like a, a solution that I can do both maybe put it somewhere in a game room and possibly extend extend uh, either the AV setup or the HDMI just have it sort of as an option for both I'm not quite sure about the uh, the marquee kind of things down the side I'm not uh, the jury's out at the moment as to whether I find that a distraction or not and I just I saw the other night that you can change the the bezels on this as well I do like this one though I can't quite remember how many how many games are on this preloaded absolutely crazy um, I, I want to say about 20 or 30 thousand it's, it's crazy crazy you could have had even more if you'd gone for the larger SD card price wise uh, what did it cost this is the best thing for me uh, I went to the official the official site for this and it was a shade under 60 pound so I think it was 58 pound and that included postage bearing in mind it's uh, it's coming from China direct and when I went to the site they do have PayPal as an option so you've got a little bit of protection there and they estimate anything between 10 to 30 days for delivery time but this turned up within the 10 days so I was really really quite surprised at that here we go 32x a console that I never owned I've owned pretty much everything else in the Sega family but this was a bridge too far for me by this time Sega had had way too much of my money let alone time loved I absolutely loved virtual racing I've got it on the Mega Drive which was an achievement in itself but again so far I've got no real complaints I mean all these uh, all these things are kind of much of a muchness I suppose and um, it comes down to at the end of the day what the uh, what the processor is what the power is I suppose and this seems to be adequate there's so many on the market so many clones uh, but I saw a video about this a couple of weeks ago and I just thought well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go Sega CD this is a game that I owned many years ago and foolishly sold it I went back a couple of years ago to try and pick up a copy Sonic CD and at that point prices had gone through the roof I don't know what they are now I really don't know um, but I missed the opportunity to get it back in the collection I still got my mega CD mark one fingers crossed it still fires up perfectly the whole mechanism and everything else works fine 
which is uh, a lot to be said considering my original Xbox is giving me absolute nightmares at the moment with the whole disk drive mechanism. I don't know if there are any kind of filters on this. I really, I really haven't spent the time digging around in the settings. There was a game that I did try, surprisingly enough. I don't know whether it was me, but uh, it was Super Mario World, and you, you've got platforming sections, and there's obviously multiple sprites to animate the supports for the platforms as they rock. And I, I don't know, I just felt it was a little bit... It was dropping frames there, just struggling a little bit with something that you would feel was not that difficult to pull off. Uh, Tekken. Now this is a game that I, I've completed several times I reckon over the years. So I know this one inside and out and uh, I can't really, I can't really fault it. It just played and looked and run fine and it sounded fine as well. Uh, another thing I don't understand if it's working yet because I've not really I've not really uh, gone back into a, gone back into a game. I'm not sure if the auto if the save function works or what I need to do about that because I saw something in the kind of settings. Um, but then when you play something like Super Mario World, me and my grandson are playing that. He absolutely loves it. It, well, it did seem to be saving, so I don't know how that side of it works. So I need to do a little bit of research on that. Hundreds of PlayStation games on this. There's a few ROMs that I will get. I will be brave enough. Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Is this possibly my all time favourite beat em up? Yes. Quite possibly. Followed closely by Tekken. Um, yep, I've got this. This is. Uh, I've got this on original, on the SNES. Let's just give this a quick bash. Again, I can't really say that I noticed any issues with this. It's been a few years since I played it, but nothing glaringly obvious. Again, audio seems to be good. I've got the audio, this is uh, down in the front room, so the audio is going through the sound bar. Rage Racer. Never got around to owning this on the PS1, despite my, um, my love for Ridge Racer. I'm wondering if it, it was this one that you could customise the paint on or choose different designs. can't quite remember let's just jump straight into this and have an incredibly embarrassing time trying to drive this so the couple of ROMs that I need immediately as uh, a couple for the N64 and there's a couple for the PlayStation 1. But there's, there's, there just seems to be everything on here. The most bizarre stuff, including computer stuff. And something that I never never realised was really a thing. And that's, uh, that's emulating or, or rep replicating, if you like kind of early electronic handhelds and, and game and watch and, and that kind of stuff. Here we go.
again smooth I couldn't really see any problems I couldn't quite get this to power slide don't think I had enough power come on I've left a few machines out, uh, consoles as examples. Um, it's just because I just grabbed this footage quickly. I was just, you know, just jumping around and, and going straight into some games that I'm very familiar with. I don't think Ridge Racer is on here. That's quite weird. That is weird. I do have Ridge Racer, so whether I'll bother and get a ROM, I, I don't know. Come on. Yeah, it all looks good to me. All looks good. It's set up at the moment, as I said, in the front room. So. It may end up staying there to be honest with you because it's got that kind of dip in and out nature and obviously it's got all the Mario games on it the old ones that me uh, my grandson's gonna like so we just might do that uh, this is Airwolf this is perhaps my all-time favorite apologies for the arm my all-time favorite game on the Commodore 64 failed to get this running now I think that's simply because I was trying to navigate the like virtual keyboard I think that was the only reason and quite frankly I, I just didn't have a clue what I was doing here but again if the Commodore emulation is reliable then I'm gonna be all over that it was one of my favorite PCs of all time I've still got a very first is it called a bread bean example it'll be the shape that you can see in the uh, see on the marquee there shame I couldn't play this because if I if I had managed to work this out and load it um, I'd, have, I'd have been on this for ages I do have this on cassette, but uh, it, it doesn't load anymore, unfortunately, it's just failing to load. Two of my favourite games would be this and Cauldron on the Commodore, and even Cauldron. Cauldron I've got on a compilation tape, that fails to load as well. I completely forgot, I should have checked if that was on here. It must be. So then I got into this, and this was, this was quite a surprise, into the basic prompt screen. Really quite, quite surprised at that. So that would be interesting if you can do a little basic programming. I used to be, uh, I used to be really into that back in the day. Such a pleasant sight that is, the, uh, the Commodore screen. Yeah, so I'm gonna get uh, also I'm gonna get now a very sort of basic um, USB keyboard as well, and just it might make the computer emulators a little bit easier to navigate. But there you go, there you go. It was a long one, so I do apologise. But that's the Super Console X. Um, I think if you're like me and you're not bothered technically, then you should really give this a go. Um, it, you know, it's it, the value of this, the plug and play nature, I would really consider giving it a go. If you're gonna get it from Amazon or, or somewhere else that gives you that UK assurance, they're gonna, they're gonna charge you a premium and it's quite a bit on some sites. Um, but yeah, yeah. I do, I've always been very, I won't say anti-emulation, but always very sceptical. 
The reasoning for this decision is that I have been absolutely shocked at the increasing value of uh, of retro. So, for example, a couple of years ago, I, I was going to get Resident Evil 2 on the N64. That's considered a really good game just because it was considered impossible to convert. Um, and I kind of mulled around the idea and I was going to buy it. This was only a couple of years ago and you could get that game complete for about £30, £40. So I went back. I went back on uh, online just a couple of days ago. I couldn't get it uh, for underneath £150. You know, and they were like rough examples and £200 and there was loads of repro boxes being sold. So, so yeah, the logic behind this decision is uh, that I, you know, I just refuse now to, to try and keep up with those prices. Um, it's just crazy. It's crazy, it's silly, and hopefully one day it will all end. Um, but yeah, and then on the plus side, you've got the plug and play nature. Everything is there for you. Um, and I would really strongly recommend it. The negatives, there's always got to be some negatives. Um, those controllers are no good. The D-pads on them are going to be eventually like sandpaper. They're really rough. They're not nice. And you've got the build quality there. But that's what you expect. So you're going to swap those out anyway. Um, the heat, it does get hot. I am concerned about that. So I'm going to look at coming up with some kind of mod, some kind of little solution. And what else really? Be careful of the settings. If you're not super, super techie, it's very easy without any kind of warnings to go into some of the settings on this that can have real dire consequences. So just just be careful about that if that's not your thing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I do appreciate if you've watched the whole thing. Um, I don't even know where to start with this. So I'm going to really enjoy this. Part of me wants to go into the settings or just play the games. But who knows? Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Well, I have nothing planned. Well, you've been stood up then, Barry. I often enjoy some Kentucky Fried Chicken and Chips and my own company. Hi, Barry. Hi, Barry. How's it going? Oh, the chicken looks great. Why didn't you ask Kentucky Fried Chicken. Hello, Barry. Just not my day, is it? Good food attracts good company.